decided to go ahead and like we've never done a subcast together. Uh, we got right at 11 minutes left before we got to roll for uh, uh, our youth practice and whatnot. But um, I was going to let Tyler have the floor, and then I had like a little segue or mention with some other stuff with that. Um, so, but this should be a fun little subcast. We'll keep an eye on the clock for you, uh, so that our subcast is still kind of kind of short. But you know, sometimes it works out well that way. Yeah, one thing uh, we we were talking about this the other day, um, and it's one thing that surprisingly I haven't caught. Um, I haven't really thought about it until just the other day. Mm -hmm. I was you know doing some reading and different things, and one thing I was really noticing is, and, and it, it, as a coach, I'm sure a lot of y'all, anyone who's a coach out there, probably hate hearing this, and it just probably boils your blood to hear. But like when one of your guys comes up and is like, "Hey, what if I lose this match?" You know, or what if this person beats me? And it's, it, you know, it's kind of irritating because you're kind of thinking like, well, you've already lost. Then, like, you get really mad. Yeah, don't. Um, you don't yeah, want to think that way. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to think like that. But at the same time, especially with these younger guys, a lot of that is because they they do, they have so many nerves about this. It's a new sport. They're anxious. They're kind of nervous. They're they're embarrassed. Some of them might be embarrassed to lose. And one thing I was thinking, instead of like lashing out, it's like. You know, I had just kind of asking, getting to talk through it. Um, you know, what what if you do lose? Like, what happens if you do lose? Is, is it is it the end of the world? No, it's not. Like, so in one thing that maybe I can we can start doing with our guys is just like talking them through it. It's like, all right, so you go out there and lose. What's your you know what's the worst case scenario? You get pinned. Okay, is that is that something that you can survive through? If it is, then why are you worried about it? It's not something that's life or death. It's not something that's gonna, you know, it's gonna, you know, any harm done to you. It's in the grand scheme of things, it's it's very insignificant. It's, it doesn't really matter. It's just one match, yeah. and it's one match. So if you know, and I don't want to give those guys, you know, the it's not an excuse, not yeah, a way out. Yeah, it's not. It's not an excuse to say, well, it doesn't matter. Therefore, I can. It's almost what I'm kind of thinking of it as is think about, you know, prepare for the worst, but you know, and hope for the best. But at the same time, realizing that the worst when it, it the worst when it does happen, it, it's not the end of the world. It's not the worst yeah, thing ever. It, you can survive and through it, and you can come back, and you can bounce back. It's not something that is going to condemn you to, you know, one thing. Yeah. So. And it's kind of like what we were talking about when we came up with the uh, like, if you've got nothing to lose, then you shouldn't be afraid of losing. Yeah. Like, let it fly, let it go, um, and just get after it. And funny enough, I was just listening to. Um, Kyle Snyder on one of the Rudest podcasts, and he was just like, after each loss, he's become more free yeah. because he worries less about it. You know, I'm like, yeah, uh, his NCAA loss to Gadsden when he got pinned was was heartbreaking. He said probably one of his hardest loss. But then when he lost in the finals of the World Tournament, yeah, I mean it's never cool. It never feels good. But he wasn't down for as long as he was before. He was able to yeah. bounce back for it. And he has less nerves going into things because he's, you know, with each loss comes like a freeing moment of like, oh, I'm lost, but I'm back at it yeah. again. And he and he's going forward and, and moving forward, which I thought was just kind of really powerful too. So again, I think it just hones into like, if you've got nothing to lose, you know, there's nothing to be afraid of. Exactly. You know, and, you know, we kind of, I don't know if that's exactly the way I said it before, but I like the way that sounds too, you know. Uh, hashtag that one, and then whatever it was, but uh, but you know, but it plays through, and it and it's a good thing for you. And um, actually, believe it or not, did I bring it down here? I actually got that book. You talking about reading that? This so far is really good. The switch, and we've talked about like changing things up and doing things differently. And I got that one because uh, I heard um, Carrie Collat and and the other guy they were talking about. And there's just a lot of scenarios, and this is meant for I really business and other words. Yeah, that'd been awesome too. Yeah, but uh, but you know it's like changing the way we do things, and I've always said like there needs to be change, but I don't know how to do it. So hopefully we can talk to our guys differently and figure out that change to make them figure yeah. out what how to get over the next thing. Because we talk about it at the high school level, like you know other schools do the same things, but you know what is it? So maybe we can find the change that we're looking for through this, and maybe get that freeing moment so that people will just let it go and let it fly See, uh, and get after it. And I, I feel there's a happy medium there because I was actually oh yeah definitely. speaking of. Speaking of reading, I was reading yesterday. Um, it was it's a it's a book called you know it's a book by a clinical psychologist. Anyway, and one of the things he has this chapter and it's called "Don't let Don't let your kids do things that make you hate them," mm -hmm. and um, it, it's talking about you know different aspects of parenting and all this stuff. And then it talks about the dangers of 
you know, it talks about the dangers of over-discipline, but it also talks about the dangers of not disciplining enough. Yeah. And, and it's, it's always really, that happy medium yeah, you got to find. And, you, and that's what it or says. Or unhappy it's, medium. And one of the things he mentions about the, you know, the parenting in it, and I feel like this can go well for coaches too, it's we don't, you know, as coaches, sometimes like we want to be too friendly, but it's, it's almost as a mean. It's like we're not we're not there to be a fr- like be friends, but we're there to kind of act as like a proxy to help you adjust to this new world that you're getting introduced to in Which wrestling. That we're, we're parenting them through wrestling. Exactly, and that's what it is. It's like so we can't worry about being like too nice, but we also don't want to be too strict and turn people away. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's one thing when we have. That's why I think we need to yeah. find our balance because we've kind of done yeah. both ends of it. So we're looking we for have. our balance of that. And so. I think that's perfect because like when you have these kids who are dealing with pre-match jitters which at that level we can all say we all experienced it it's it's natural instead of seeing it through our eyes now maybe we can start trying to you know figure it out through their eyes and help them and help them work through that it, it's not it's not a big deal like it's this is yep. a small thing in a bigger picture and if you let and if you're overly concerned about this then you're putting yourself at a disadvantage like if you're if you're putting so much emphasis on this one match you know, you. I mean, there's so much more you need to worry about. You need to worry about mm-hmm. getting better in the wrestling room every day. You need to be worry about what am I? I'm going to be able to compete at the high school. I mean, right now we're in middle school, man. High it's, school or somewhere else, or exactly. even further down the line. So yeah, I mean, and that, yeah. that's stuff we teach, and like you said, it's just something that we're we're slowly working our way to find that middle ground right. to figure out which works best for our guys. So and you know, and it's and my little segue into what I was talking about earlier with Fix and Seriano was like with that mentality and I sure and I know both those guys are seasoned veterans from what they do yeah. you know and they've been there before and it's not really like they're afraid of losing per se but I think as much as I enjoyed that match for like the stalemates and what it was and just like the the chess battles of where it was but maybe if one of them had approached it just a little bit more of like yeah. if I lose not a big deal because at the time they were both undefeated so now I was want, thinking about it, I was like what if they wrestled after they both had a loss well, what's the worst that can happen? I take a loss. They've already taken yeah. a loss now. You know, so I, I kind of was like, man, that would have been a great way for those two to, and maybe I'm putting too much pressure on them, but like for them to like live up that match because of, yeah. if you hadn't listened to it, go check out the other episode about the disappointments and the matchups we haven't seen. And I think maybe they were just so worried about that and they kind of became like, this matchup did happen and they were worried about losing versus trying to forget that loss and get after winning. And by no means I'm trying to say I'm in either one of their heads and know what they're doing or what they're saying because those are some high caliber wrestlers. But maybe just that little bit and one of them firing off more, hey, what's the worst that happens? One of them loses. Because what's happened? They've both, crazy enough as 133 has been, they've both actually taken a loss. You know, yeah. So, not not including that one match. And they, so, yes, they are high caliber wrestlers. And guess what, though? They've both taken that loss, you know? And I don't really care, consider Seriano's loss to fix a loss in the same way as I consider like the loss to Philippi yeah. or the loss to DeSanto, because that was those two. But, hey, guess what? They're still wrestling. They're and, still getting after it, and they're still title contenders. Exactly, and that's the... And, at the end of the day, it's like you said, yes, they're high caliber wrestlers, but guess what? They're still human. I mean, it's mm-hmm. they still they still deal with that same stuff. Yep. You know, more than likely. So Definitely. yeah, that's just a little kind of subcast. We did one together today. If that's yeah. Right. And we that worked out really good. Yeah. I think timing is good. So awesome. You guys check it out. Um, like I said, if you hadn't already listened to it, go check out our other rant episode. It's the most ranting I think we've ever done in an episode. Um, but it felt good to get off the chest. Yeah. Maybe somebody will let us know why things are going on the way uh, they are. Um, because we are that important in the wrestling community. Um, no, we're we just are. kidding. Nobody, no, we well, are. Okay, we are. Some, I'm waiting. Somebody's going to have this, all this blood. All right. Guys, we'll see you later. we got to get to youth practice. Okay.